So after a couple of days of brain juice squeeze, I decided this will be the agenda I'm going to go through. It only took about 20 minutes to 30 minutes or less. What I'm going to share with everybody here is that let's take the time machine fly back to the past to see what is happening about 50, 60 years ago. Then we will come back to where we are today and we do a little bit of fantasy to move to next 10 years. And after that, we will fall back to reality, like what your boss say, back to work. Right? And what is going to happen to the digital for the changing of their face? in the next one year, five years, ten years, and what can you do as the CIO or the company owners of your organizations? Okay. Um, don't worry, this is not a lecture, right? First of all, uh, let's think back to 60 years ago, in year 1971. Year 1971, we are in year 1971, right? The first Intel processor, the 4004, is being launched, right? A couple of years later on, the Intel co-founder, the Golden Moore, he found a pattern, a pattern where he noticed the transistor side, the transistor side of their processor is double almost every 18 to 24 months. Right? It's just an observation of a pattern. So he decided to write an article and publish it into a journal. Someone put this as a Morse law. Right? But basically what Morse law is very simple. The processing power of the processor will double every two years. Okay, now. I don't have a laser pointer here. The interesting part here is, if you look at the Moore's Law, the graph chart, it has been flattened all the while. But you see there's an hour of sudden, a very exponential growth, starting from the year 2003, right? move up, shoot up very fast. And if you are the business owner, I think you would like your business performance will be something like this as well. Right? So am I. <laughs> okay. Now, so if you compare the 401s with the latest Core i processor now, yes. Right. The latest Core i processor is 3,500 times faster, as well as 90,000 times more efficient with only 1 over 16,000 cores. Now, what I want to tell you in this graph is, we are entering into the power of 2, the exponential growth. For those who are in mathematics, you know, 2 times 2 equal to 4, 4 power 2, 16, blah, blah, blah. When come to a moment, the number will shoot up very fast and almost become infinite. This is what happened in our era for the last 10 years now. Means, we are now in a very exponential growth of the processing power and the semiconductor. Due to that, for the last 10 years, you've seen the virtualizations, storage, the infrastructure, then the sensor, all this size is getting smaller, cost everything is getting cheaper. As well, you've seen the mobile device when the first iPhone launched in year 2007. And it's just like a wave of non-stop where you are seeing the iPhone 8 this year. As well as the industry is playing a catch-up game where software and applications originally is lagged behind the hardware, but then they found a way to make it more efficient where the software now is on par 
with the hardware growth. Okay. Let's review the second chart here. This is basically uh, internet speed, right? The internet speed whereby if you look at the orange line, this is how our mobile network, 1G, 2G, 2.5, 3G, 3.5, how it grows. As far as the blue line, which is the cable broadband. Okay. Nothing secret here. If you look at here, the internet speed is also entering into the exponential growth. Now, while I do the research, to my surprise, they forecast by the year of 2030, the cable broadband speed will be around, not very fast, 85 GB. Right? Basically, the two chart I want to share with everyone is, please put it into your mind. We are entering into the high speed era where the hardware, the software, the infra, internet speed, everything is going into a very exponential growth. Now, if you look at the 3G, 5G here, 5G standard just confirmed and decided this year, right? They decided to use a polar code, and the first 5G device we expected to see in year 2020, I guess. The theoretical speed is 5 GB per second. Means, if you are watching a HD movie from your mobile phone, 30 seconds, everything download, and you can start watch. It's just like, 1G, we are just get ready, we run slowly, we start getting faster, we cross the herding, but when come to 5G, we are in the rocket era. Now, by understanding we are going into the exponential hardware and the internet, there is where people start look into the digital economy. If you Watch our Prime Minister last year, right? Announced Malaysia is going into the digital economy. In tandem to that, the organization, the MDEC, they changed the name to Malaysia Digital Economy Corporation. Now, let's look at our neighbor. We always want to compete and fight with our neighbor. Unfortunately, this round they win. Our neighbor already started the digital economy initiative two years earlier than us, right? And here come the India, here come the Chinese, right? Which they are also transform their economy into a digital economy. I just back from China last few weeks, right? I visit uh, just a small little city, small little city in the Fujian province. And seriously, to my surprise, in China, there's one thing I noticed. There are QR codes everywhere. QR code. Why they got a lot of QR codes? Because they use the WeChat, e-wallet, the Alipay, right? Small little store, hawker also, they put on the board, okay, this is the Alipay QR code. You just scan and pay. Other than this, a lot of their device, eh, they also put some QR code, printed some QR code on top of it. What you need to do, you just scan, the QR code will bring you to the video manual, they will bring you to that. That really surprised me. It is just a very simple, but you see QR code is everywhere. And we all know Jack Ma was here last few weeks, right? So, Digital economy is nothing new. It's nothing new. It has been first started 20 years ago. Right? But have you wondered, it has been started 20 years, why is only we've seen people talk about it now? Right? The answer is rather simple. Because 20 years ago, they seen the future. But at that time, the hardware and the infra still cannot cope with the visionary we have. 
now with the exponential growth, it is time for us to kickstart the whole things. You might wonder what is digital economy, right? One thing, working in IT industry is always, there is a lot of terms coming out every month. Okay. To help you understand better on digital economy, it is have another name called web or internet economy. It means every business activity, all the economy activity will be fully rely on the internet. Okay. It is the result from the billion of internet connected device. By forecast, in the year of 2025, expected there will be 25 billion devices connected to the internet. I think in this hall, easily we might have a thousand or thousand two device connected to the internet. Okay. It is in the hyper connectivity and the global outreach. To us, we just connect our device to the internet. I just discover actually all your mobile activity is a gold mine. It's a gold mine to the e-commerce. Last week, I think the US President Donald Trump just signed an executive order to leave the previous rule signed by Obama. Basically, what it is is it allow the telco to sell you as the user or your mobile or internet activity to anyone. It's still some controversies, but what you guess the telco want this because they want to track your behavior. And by knowing your behavior and pattern, they know what to push and what to sell to you. Okay, let's get back from the past 1971 and we just move forward to what is happening in 10 years ago, 10 years later on, sorry. So, the mornings, I walk out and then I'm going to work. And my car talked to me, my car talked to me. Morning, Mr. Yeoms. I wish you have a good day. Which destination you would like to go to? I said, send me to work. Yes, sir. The door is open. I just sit in so the car just drive by itself without a driver. Halfway through, the car told me, Mr. Hughes, it seems like recently you are serving around the iPhone 10s. And I detected there's nearby shop selling an iPhone 10 with the color you are looking for with some promotion. Would you like to drop by to buy the iPhone? I said, yes, go ahead. Is this a dream? Is this a dream in the next 10 years? It is not. It's already happened. Okay, one of the dynamo for the CIO, like everyone here is, there are so many technology and solution which is coming out. From the very, what we seen here, which is the cloud, big data is happening now, and the AI. I want to touch a little bit on the AI. AI is going to grow very fast for the ten, next 10 years. We are in April now. Um, if this thing happen, I think this man is going to be one of the finer battle between the human and the AI for the goal, the goal chess, right? We all know one year ago, the AlphaGo beat the humans, the Lee Shadow, which is, I think, the world number four goal players. That is one year ago. Do you know, and I think Lee Sedo won one game. On top of all the four games, right? He won one game. It could be, it could be. That is the only game human won against machine. Because after that, three months later on, AlphaGo upgraded to a second generation. 
right? He went and played a goal game with all the world top 60 players through internet. Nah. They play through internet, it's unofficial. But he go and challenge everyone in the internet, mean from rank number one to number 16. Guess what? None of them win. So industry start, uh, who is this master behind? And end up, of course, after the game done, they reveal, yes, I'm AlphaGo. So, theoretical, you know, in chess, right, there is a done, means the level. Human, the highest level is number nine, which is the lady now. And guess where is the AlphaGo now? AlphaGo is number 14. 14 done. They all agree, human, the highest we can go is only number nine, highest. Now the machine is number 14. Okay, of course, FinTech, which is the bank is looking into the robotics, right, and the IoT, 3D printing, so many things over here. You might start wonder, yeah, which one should I go? And will anyone that will help me? Okay. As well as the next generation security. These are all the terms that's coming out for the past few years, right? I'm sure everyone here or some of you is bothered by the ransomware. I talked to uh, one of my customers this morning, I think they are concerned about the ransomware. And most of my customers also ask me about the ransomware. Is there any way to prevent, any way to cure it? My only advice to them is make sure you have a backup. And you have to put your backup offline. Don't link it to your network. This is the only advice I can give you. Because I also have no solution for you to protect you and to prevent you 100% from the ransomware. Not for time being. Based on the few incidents happened to my customers. Sometimes it really make me feel a little bit helpless. Uh. This is the first time when I, I face ransomware. I hope the next generation security will have uh, solutions to it. Okay, these are all we foresee is going to is already happen or going to happen soon in the future. But where are we now? That's back to reality, right? A lot of things I'm talking is like oh, from previous to the next ten year, and some of it is not in happen in the Malaysia. So where are we? Okay, at least from what you can see here, this thing that already happened in Malaysia is the cloud and the big data. Unfortunately, I don't see any AIs that is happening over here. FinTech, yes, a couple of banks is looking into the FinTechs. Okay, robotic, not quite. IoT, yes. In fact, I'm happy yesterday I talked to one of my customers and they mentioned they are looking into the IoT solution for their construction site. I was, wow. Am I happy someone kid start the initiates? Okay. Right. 3D printing, yes, I saw it. Okay, by the way, the VR and the AR. We have a VR both in Adobe. You can go and have a try. It. Right. And the Microsoft HoloLens is somehow fall under the AR categories here. What is the difference between VR and AR? VR, you put on the lens, you are in the virtual world. AR, you put on the lens, I still see all the audience here. But the system will help me to add on. Maybe I will say, okay, change the gentleman face here to become a uh, Brad Pitt. Then his head will change into Brad Pitt. Okay. So, where are we? At least these are the things we can see in Malaysia now. With all this challenge, we all know it's going to happen. If not now, it's going for the next 10 years or next 5 years, right? What can the business do? I foresee the business is going to be transformed or totally changed. Okay. What you need to do? The first thing is, of course, speed, speed and speed. There's nothing else. Everything is in a high speed. Whether you are a SME or the MMC. It doesn't matter anymore, if you ask me. 
It's either you disrupt or being disrupted. Talking about speed, this morning on the way to here, right, I listened to BFM. Right, the news mentioned, okay, the Putrajaya are more or less finalised the new rules and regulation to governance the Uber and the Grabs. Uh, Uber and Grab, how many years? Already in the Malaysia. A couple of years, right? And I foresee if in the next five years, if driverless car is really happen, I think our government start got a headache to make another new rules and regulations. It's always in the catch-up game where we are in the loss. So, but it also means we are in the high-speed era now where the symptom has shown we human is starting lagging behind. That really pose a challenge to everyone here. Okay. Of course, another one is company have to start transform the CIO into a creative CIO. I mean, if you are a CIO now, you might have need to start wonder and go do some research on what is creative CIO, what can I do? Creative CIO means you have to do one step by create what are the technology solution I can use it in my organizations in order to make my organization stay relevant and move on. And number third is, small is beautiful. But the big could be better. We, system market here, we always say, I'm a small company also. Sometimes small company is good, it's beautiful, because I can move very far, I can make decisions instantly, I don't have multi-layer protocol, so and so forth. Compared to the MMC, bureaucracy, bulky, move very slow, somehow it got a point. But with the AI, with all the solution technology in, I will tell you, the giant will have the same flexibility as the small. Because the AI, the IoT sensor, everything will find out the pattern which is they never discover, they are not aware of, and they will tell them what to do. And if you look at how the MNC moving, the Microsoft, like Alibaba, Amazon, I can tell you is tremendous and very scary the way they move. The Microsoft we know today is no longer the Microsoft 10 years ago. We have been the Microsoft partner for many years. I can sense it. It's, it's very different now. So it also gives us a challenge now. Small, we also need to compete with the big now. What can we do? But the good thing is, with the cloud technology and all these things, we are equal. UMMC pay a 4 USD subscription per seat per month, ISME also pay the same. We use the same technology. That is the only fair platform that we can fight for each other. Okay. And of course, you look at here, jobs are likely to be taken over. This is nothing new. You look at the, the news article, there's been 20 jobs or whatever, so and so forth. I think the first one, if the driverless car happen, the driver will lose the jobs, right? And in US, the lawyer already start lost the jobs, right? Because they use the AI to search for all the rules and regulations, and the accuracy is 95% accurate, much, much better than a human. And this robot will never tell you, I'm tired, I want to take a rest, I know. I think being a boss, if I come out to use it, I will give you a robot that can do the job of 10 people, 7 times 24, non-stop, no maintenance, no need to pay salary, nothing. I'm sure you will say, yes, I want one. Yeah, but what will happen to the employees? Okay. The last difficult challenge will be you got to know how to sell the informed consumer. Informed consumer here means, right, the consumer nowadays are smart. Uh, means uh, when they want to buy something, they will go and do the research and study. They almost know all the in and out and only they come to you, say, I want to buy this. 
And at the same time, they are the good actor uh, most of the time. They will pretend they don't know, they know nothing, they ask stupid questions. I tell you, if you thought the consumer know nothing, you are wrong. Anytime they know much better than you. And this is the same thing I always tell my consultant. I say, you got a hard time as a consultant to catch up because the consumer now is also as smart as you. So what can you do today? Of course, right, all the information I share just now, most of it I have no answer for you, seriously. I have no answer for you. But the good thing is, you can find some answer throughout the sessions today by talking to all the booth, to the expertise here. It will more or less give you some clues on what can you do. Right? You can explore the cloud solution, VR analytics, VR, at least you can experience some VR here to get to know what is it, and as well as some security solutions. A journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. If you sit down and do nothing, the time and the technology will disrupt you. Not now, but in the next five or ten years. This one, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> all right, and I always tell my wife, by knowing all this, sometimes it really make me worry about my next generations. My wife say, you don't think far, lah. don't think too far. <laughs> that is their, 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 their matter already. Okay, so it really bring back to the reality we should focus on where we are now. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you to Mr. Yeo. All right. That is really very informative. Come on, give Mr. Yeo another big round of applause.